bet horse racing on DRF Bets. We'll match your first deposit of $200. Get free expert picks and past performances, plus weekly cash back. All from Daily Racing Form, the most trusted name in horse racing. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the feature race at Belmont at the Big A on Saturday. Race number nine, the Grade 2 Sands Point. Three-year-old Phillies going a mile and an eighth on the turf. $200,000 is the purse. Let's take a look at this field. We have a field of nine entered for turf. The number 10, Baby Man, is entered main track only. Of the horses entered for turf, Mike, I think it's a pretty competitive bunch. Pizza Bianca, the winner of last year's Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies Turf, makes her first start since a sojourn to Royal Ascot, where I thought she ran just fine, eighth against a pretty good field. Yeah, it was a very good field. She never really factored in there trying to rally from last, but she was staying on, I guess, pretty well in there. You could, I suppose, make the argument, Dan, that nine furlongs um, of this race is better than eight. Um, the only question that I have with her um, as the morning line favorite is, where's the edge that she holds on this field? And she's coming into this race off a little bit of a layoff and deals with an outside post position. Let's throw up the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. Lady Baffled might be in here to ensure some pace. This is a pretty big step up in class. First time for Grand Motion, first time on the turf. Vergara is very tactical. That gives her an edge. And Kinesi has shown speed on occasion as well. Yeah, I, I can't argue too much with this pace projector. I do think the eight is going to go to the lead in here, um, whether that, you know, does, you know, enhances her chances at all um i guess i would be surprised because she's never run on turf before um the other ones i can't really argue with the way they have this race laid out the number one skims has good tactical speed she's likely going to work out a nice pace tracking ground saving trip from the inside post under john velasquez she's multiple graded stakes placed for Shug mcgahey i'm just starting to get a little bit tired of her act it looked like she was going to win the dueling grounds oaks last time out and vergara came back and said no and we've seen that from skims a few times where she's had big chances to win and she finds one or two better yeah, I, I'm starting to get a little tired of her, too. Um, but I, I still think she's, you know, a logical contender in a race like this. You know, she ran fine last time. Did she have an excuse not to win? Not really. Um, but she still ran OK in that race. It was a new top figure for her. I thought, too, back in the risk averse, she had a little excuse that day. She got into a little bit of traffic through the stretch um, of that race. I'm not suggesting she was going to win. Um, but I'd be willing to stay positive on her. And I think five to one on the morning line is pretty fair. The number two is Vergara for Grand Motion, Joel Rosario. This combination teamed up to win the Dueling Grounds Oaks, and Vergara just got a beautiful trip and ride under Rosario in that race. We're going to watch the stretch run. At Kentucky Downs, it's odd. You know, you have to stay on the rail sometimes. You have to get off the rail sometimes. Rosario was on the rail on the turns, off the rail on the back stretch. He's confidently handling Vergara, turning into the lane. Skims is going to loom alongside. Skims is going to poke ahead in front. To Vergara's credit, she comes back and wins, uh, going a mile and five sixteenths. Yeah, I do think she's one of the horses who I, you know, more than anything else, that I think distance probably helps this horse. So getting stretched out to a mile and five sixteenths, I think, was a positive for her. But she does look beat late in this race. Um, she's very game to come back and prevail. It was a pretty significant step forward for her. Um, and we'll see if she can just sort of back that race up. I mean, I was a little bit of a fan of hers earlier on, and it's taken her a while to get where she is now, but she's finally here. Chad Brown is the number three eminent victor. Manny Franco takes the mount. The source worked out a good trip in winning the wild applause. Three starts back, just missed in the Lake George. And then last time out in the Lake Placid, it was a race with no pace whatsoever. Haughty went right to the front, dropped down a 48 and four half and wired the field. Eminent victor just had no chance coming from off the pace that day. Yeah, I mean, she actually raced on pretty well in there. She was really trying through the stretch, but she just had absolutely no shot. And not only was she way up against the way that race was run, Dan, you know, that, that field, way tougher than this one. I mean, she actually ran well against a really good field last time. Her prior turf form is very good. You know, I guess the question for her is the nine furlongs because it, I, I guess it could work against her. Um, but, man, I don't really see any reason based on what she's done so far that she wouldn't be able to get it. I like the way the number four, Kinesi, won her first level allowance at Saratoga over this distance, three starts back. The pace wasn't very fast, but it was contested, and she was pretty game to win. I think you could make a couple of excuses. The risk of hers wasn't the cleanest trip, I thought, for her two starts back. And last time out, just a little bit too far against a little bit of a better horse. McKeelick's going to be the heavy favorite in the grade one QE2 at Keeneland on Saturday. 
I think you could just say, you know what, the Milan 3.8 was too far for her last time. I think that could be valid. Um, the other argument that you could make for her is just that um, she got, they stepped her up in class for the last two. She wasn't good enough, Dan. I, I, that's my big concern with her. I liked her starting out. Um, the risk averse, a little, you know, she lacked a little bit of room in the stretch of that race, but all in all, I thought she had a good trip and wasn't good enough. Same thing last time. They went a little farther, but decent trip wasn't good enough. I wonder if she classes up. The five spirit and glory. I think you have to have the same questions there. Dylan Davis will take them out for Robbie Falcone. Two of three in North America. She looked very good at a big price, winning her first level allowance at Belmont, coming from way off the pace to win. And her last start, the Virginia Oaks, she got a good setup and she rolled them down late. Her only time she was tested. Well, that was the Lake George two starts back, and she just didn't run very well behind Eminent View. She's a closer. She needs some pace. I think she's getting better. The price will be right. I don't know whether she can hang with graded competition. That's my question, too. Um, if, if you go back to that Lake George, um, she just really could not make an impression on that race from last. Um, and I don't think, you know, this race is necessarily that much easier. Maybe it's a little bit easier, but it's not that much easier. Um, on the other hand, Dan, I like each of our other two starts. The two wins that she's gotten since, since, she, since she arrived here, I think she ran really well in both of those races. And I particularly like the way she finishes. The well-bred number six, Hale Two, finally reverted to stock to closing tactics last time out. They tried to get her close up to the pace in longer distance races, two and three back. They cut her back in distance. They dropped her back off of the pace, and she came with a good run. Here she is winning her first level allowance. Now the pace was there for her in this race at a mile and three sixteenths. They went twelve and four. Hale Two is able to run them down. The runner-up would come back to win at that level with an eighty-five buyer. This is a, a pretty good performance. She was wide most of the trip in here. She stays on pretty gamely. It's obviously a weaker field, um, but it was a step in the right direction for her. I guess the question, Dan, is, is she just a lot better going, you know, sort of longer distances? I think the mile and eighth is probably fine for her, but it does feel like she started improving when they stretched her all the way out. Connections have done a nice job with the seven golden rocket. They claimed her for $16,000 during the spring at Monmouth, became a stakes winner against fellow New York Reds, two starts back at Saratoga. They tried her in the pebbles last time out. It was a race with no pace. The winner went gate to wire. Maybe you can give her just a pace excuse for that performance. That being said, she's going to have to run faster against these tougher horses. Yeah, she is going to have to take one more step forward, but she keeps getting better every time they send her out there, Dan. Um, I thought she ran fine last time in the Pebbles in a race that, you know, just really wasn't setting up the right way for her. She was really good two starts back. That race did set up for her, but she also really ran in that race just despite being a very big price. Really interesting spot for the eight lady baffled, making her first start on turf, first start for Graham Motion, scored last time out at Monmouth going two turns. This is a very lightly raced daughter of Frosted. I just don't see the turf in this pedigree, but her speed should play well in this spot. I wonder if she is in here maybe to help out Vergara a little bit, although Vergara is the kind of horse that you would think doesn't need help from a rabbit. <laughs> yeah, you'd think they, Vergara has the better chance to win. You'd think they'd want her to be forward. Um, I don't know why she's in here, Dan. Uh, maybe they just think she's a turf horse. As you pointed out, the pedigree is not there for her to be better on this surface, and she's got to be a lot better on this surface. Pizza Bianca has all of the credentials. Of course, she won the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies Turf last year. She won the Hilltop at Pimlico over a weaker field. And then last time out in the Coronation, Group 1 at Royal Ascot. Tough, tough horses. She was just last and, and, and buried down towards the inside as they headed into the straight. She was weaving her way through traffic. She never made an impression. I thought she ran better than the final running line looks. Now she's going to have to come off a layoff and go a mile and an eighth for the first time. Yeah, I, I mean, I thought she ran fine last time. Um, again, my just my big question with her, Dan, is where she's the morning line favorite, probably will be favored. Where's her edge? Um, she doesn't have a big edge on this field. That, to me, just doesn't make me want to take a short price on her. Um, I guess her first two starts off the layoff earlier this year, they were fine, uh, but they didn't blow me away. Baby Man has entered main track only, would obviously be a threat if this race is washed from the turf. Top pick time for the grade two Sands Point Stakes. Eminent Victor, pace compromised last time out, still staying on. If she gets the mile and an eighth, I think she's going to be charging on the stretch, Mike. Yeah, I think she could be tough in this race. I think it's a great spot for her. Um, the mile and an eighth to me is, you know, a little bit of a question, but I think she's going to be fine. 
I'm not sure how fast they're going to go in the early portion of this race. I do know Vergara is tactical. I do know she has heart. I'm expecting her to be right in the thick of things when they turn into the stretch following that game win at Kentucky Downs. 3192 for Mike, 2956 for me. It's the Grade 2 Sands Point, the Saturday feature at Belmont at the Big A.